This video is a continuation of part 1 of two-way analysis of variance. In that video, I demonstrated how the data was processed and analyzed in XPSS, and these are the results that were produced in that video. If you have not seen that video, I hereby kindly encourage you to please see or watch that video first to learn how the two-way analysis of variance was performed in XPSS. The link to the video is given in the description section of this video below. Without further ado, let's begin the interpretations of these results. My name is Titoken and this is Titoken Max Solutions, a YouTube channel for improving the knowledge of how to do things. The first table here is between subjects factors. As you can see, this table displays the number of levels in our independent variables, their labels and sample sizes. That is, marital status is two levels, that is married and single, and they both have 48 sample sizes respectively. Income has three levels, that is low, medium, and high, and they each have 32 sample sizes. The second table is the descriptive statistics table. This table displays the mean and standard deviation of the body weight of the marital status based on each level of income. As you can see, the average weight of a married or single person is relatively different for each level of income, but we cannot say at this point that the difference is significant or not. But before you can make that judgment, you are strongly advised to check the p-value of marital status and income and this can be found in the sixth column of the table of test of between subjects effect. However, before you can assess that table, you must first confirm that the parametric assumption of homogeneity of variances is not violated. To confirm this, proceed to the next table called Levens test of equality of error variances. Your only interest in this table is to look at the p-value column designated as SIG. If the p-value is greater than 0.05, then the assumption of homogeneity of variances is not violated. Otherwise, it is violated if the p-value is less than 0.05. But as you can see from this table, the p-value is 0.462, which is greater than 0.05. So the data is tenable for homogeneity of variances because this result shows that the error variance of the dependent variable is equal across groups. So we can proceed to interpret results in the next table of test of between subjects effects. This is the next table to interpret and is the most important table of results called test of between subjects effects. In this table, a lot of information is given, but the important columns in this table are the last three columns namely the F ratio column, P value column designated as SIG, and the partial eta squared column. The results in the F ratio column or in the SIG column help us to determine whether to reject or accept our hypothesis. If you wish to use the results in the F column, you will have to compare the F calculated value from this table with the F critical value from the F distribution table at the given degrees of freedom and 5% significance level. Now, for the F column, if the F calculated value in this table is greater than the F critical value, then you reject the null hypothesis and conclude that there is a significant difference or effects among the groups. However, for this video, I will rather use the results in the column of the P value designated as SIG to make decision about the hypothesis. As regards, if the p-value is less than 0.05, then there is statistically significant difference or effect, and the null hypothesis should be rejected. But if the p-value is greater than 0.05, then there is no statistically significant difference or effect, and the analysis will fail to reject the null hypothesis. Now, marital status. As you can see from this table, the p-value of marital status is 0.000 which is less than 0.05. This indicates that there is a statistically significant effect of marital status on body weight. Based on this, we will reject the null hypothesis, which states that 
marital status will have no significant effect on the body weight. Now, to know the amount of variance the marital status has imparted on the body weight, we check the column for the partial eta squared. As you can see, for marital status, the partial eta squared is 0.182. This means that 18.2% of variance in the dependent variable body weight is explained by the marital status. As you can see, this analysis shows that marital status has a significant effect on the body weight, and the variance in the body weight explained by marital status is 18.2%. This clearly explains the main effect of marital status on body weight. Now, since the p-value shows that there is significant effect on the body weight by marital status, it is important to know where the significant difference or effect is coming from between single and married. So scroll down to pairwise comparison under the marital status. This table information is straightforward. However, since marital status has just two levels, their pairwise comparisons will just be similar. The mean difference column and the p-value column designated as Sig are the two special columns to help determine where the significant difference is coming from. You will have to identify where the pairwise comparisons have p-value less than 0.05 and also have asterisk mark attached to the value of the mean difference. As you can see, the value of the mean difference for the pairwise comparisons in the two rows carry asterisk mark and this indicates where the significant difference is coming from. Similarly, the p-value of the body weight for the pairwise comparison is 0.000 each, which is less than 0.05 indicating significant difference. This generally means that the significance difference is coming from both single and married, respectively. Now, let's return to the test of between subject effects table above. Now, income. Similarly, the p-value of income is 0.001, which is less than 0.05. This also indicates that there is a statistically significant effect of income on body weight. Again, we will reject the null hypothesis which states that income will have no significant effect on the body weight. Again, to know the amount of variance the income has imparted on the body weight, we check the column for partial eta square. As you can see, the partial eta square for income is 0.146. This means that 14.6% of the variance in the dependent variable body weight is explained by the income. Similarly, the analysis shows that income has a significant main effect on body weight, and the variance in the body weight among the three levels of income, that is low, medium, and high levels of income, is 14.6%, which is however smaller than the amount of variance accounted for by the marital status. Now, since the p-value has shown that income has significant main effect on the body weight, it's also important to know where the significant difference or effect is coming from among the three levels of income. So, scroll down to pairwise comparison under the income. To interpret the results of this table so as to indicate where the differences lie, you will have to identify where the pairwise comparisons have p-value less than 0.05 and have asterisk mark attached to the value of the mean difference. As you can see in this table, the pairwise comparisons between low and high has a p-value of 0.001, which is less than 0.05, and has asterisk mark on the mean difference. Similarly, medium and high has a p-value of 0.013, which is less than 0.05, and has asterisk mark on the mean difference. This means that the main effect on the body weight is coming from between low income and high income, and between medium income and high income. There is no significant difference between low and medium, or between medium and low, because their p-values are 1.000 which are greater than 0.05. Now, let's return to the test of between subject effects table above again. Now, marital status 
times income. For the interactions effect between marital status and income, the p-value of marital status and income interaction on the body weight is 0.457, which is greater than 0.05. This indicates that there is no statistically significant effect, meaning that the interaction between marital status and income does not have significant effect on the body weight. So for this interaction effect, we fail to reject the null hypothesis, which states that the interaction between marital status and income we have no significant effect on the body weight. Accordingly, the partial eta squared value is 0.017. This means that about 1.7% variance of the body weight is accounted for by the interaction effect, which is obviously insignificant. Since there is no statistically significant difference, SPSS will not generate the pairwise comparisons. However, just so that you know, SPSS graphical user interface does not usually issue a pairwise comparisons for interactions effect for a two-way ANOVA, even if there is a significant difference. The next table of result is the interaction effect of marital status and income on the body weight. Now let's scroll down to the table. As you can see, the mean values of the body weight based on marital status at different levels of income are relatively the same. Hence, there was no significant difference. Now, let's proceed to the postdoc test table for multiple comparisons. Postdoc test in ANOVA shows where the differences lie if there is a significant difference. As you can see in this table, the pairwise comparisons between low and high has a p-value of 0 0.001, which is less than 0 0.05, and has asterisk mark on the mean difference. Similarly, medium and high has a p-value of 0 0.12, which is less than 0 0.05, and has asterisk mark on the mean difference. This means that the difference in the body weight is coming from low income and high income, and from medium income and high income, respectively. There is no significant difference between low and medium or between medium and low income because their p-values are 0.715, which are greater than 0.05. Based on these multiple comparisons, the mean values of the three levels of income have been highlighted in a homogeneous subset in the next table. As you can see, low and medium income have been grouped in one subset because their mean values are not statistically significantly different, while the high income is grouped separately because the mean value is significantly different. Now on the profile plots. The estimated marginal means of the body weight are also illustrated with profile plots. Now for marital status, the profile plots show that the body weight is significantly different between being single and being married as their estimated marginal means are wide apart. For income, the estimated marginal means of the body weight due to low and medium income are not statistically significantly different, but are statistically significantly different from high income. The marital status, that is the married and single profile, at different levels of income do not have interaction effect on the body weight, but did exhibit individual or main effect on the body weight. This result did not show to me that there is significant interaction effect because the body weight of the marital status responded with similar pattern to changes in income level, so no significant difference. Similarly, as the income changes from low to medium, the body weight of single profile increased in weight, while the body weight of the married insignificantly changed. But as the income raised from medium to high, the body weight of married and single profiles responded with positive increase in weight. However, this result may be as it is because the data I used for this analysis is fictitiously generated. So, when you analyze your own data, the output might be different. This is how to interpret the results of two-way analysis of variance. But right now, we have come to the end of this video, and I hope you'll be able to replicate this procedure to interpret your own results. If you like this video and you want to see more video content like this, 
please give this video a thumbs up share this video and subscribe to my youtube channel to receive notification every time i publish new and useful content subscription is free thanks for your time and subscription and i hope to see you again in my next video bye